I had a Speedy B25 before and it didn't work and I didn't really wear it and I did wear it crossbody too bulky and I sold it but I'm skipping past that. Somehow that will have resolved all of those. Ooh, me likey. Bye. Come home. Oh no, I've got no money left. Been there, done that. Hello there, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me. Today this is going to be like my confessional. There are seven bags. Very, very unexpected bags that I am absolutely loving. These are all bags that I thought I didn't like, that I didn't want to buy, styles of bags I had no interest in. I've even talked about them in videos and all seven of these I absolutely love. I'm obsessing a little bit on and they're totally and utterly unexpected. So I'm going to share them with you today. I'm going to confess my sins and we're going and we're going to rationalise and reason them through. And the first one is the Fendi Mini Baguette in black and white. Now this is part of the Marc Jacobs collection. I will put in footage. I tried this on in London and I absolutely fell in love with it. Absolutely fell in love. And I had looked at this on the website. I think I'd mentioned it in a video, but I didn't really think much of it. It looked pretty bleh on the website. Didn't look striking, didn't look fabulous. Was a bit of a mm, bag. And then I saw it. It was in Fendi in Bond Street on a little shelf tucked away in in the corner underneath and of course Amelia spied it and out it came and I think I tried it on multiple times in that store. I also tried it on in Selfridges. I just couldn't put it down. I loved it. If I hadn't already bought what I shared with you in my recent unboxing from London which was a bag and was Dior and was a strap which I all love and no regrets, but I was trying to stay within the kind of budget I'd set myself and I was trying to be more intentional and not buy 50 million bags in one trip because let's be honest, I've done that before. I would have bought this. I absolutely love it. And I, I thought nothing of it when I saw it, but when I did see it in person and tried it on, absolutely love it. It's not a bad price for luxury. It's £1,550. And I know that's a lot of money because I still live in the real world. But compared to what these luxury bags now cost, that's actually a very reasonable price. And I'm obsessed with that bag. I, it's living in there and I, I really, really like it. And number two is another Fendi mini baguette because apparently they're my new obsession. And this is the Sherling version. Now this is a little bit more expensive. I think this is 1750 potentially in the Sherling and it's in the traditional Zucca print in the tobacco and black colour in Sherling and I love it. And when we were in London, my friends that were there, who know my collection probably as well as I do because we all share this crazy hobby, were saying to me, you won't wear that. It'll be like the multicolour one. It's not your colours, it's browns. You don't like browns, you don't like those types of colours and they are probably 110% right. So why am I still obsessed with this bag? Why can I not get this bag out of my mind? Even though those colours and what they're saying makes perfect sense, but I think it's really cool. I think it's a really, really cool bag and I really, really like the Sherling. Not a bad price for Sherling. I really like it. Number three, and this, this takes me to the fair. This, this blows my little brain a little bit because I have said in so many videos I do not like the Alma bag. I do not like the Alma bag. It's not for me. And I'm not even talking about the Nano Alma in this video because we all know they went and released a Nano Alma in bright orange and they're going to bring it in fuchsia. And we all know I'm obsessed with that. And we all know that orange Alma I've been banging on about in videos for months and I really, really like it. That's not even what I'm talking about. I'm not even talking about the Nano. I am totally and utterly obsessed with the Nano, with, no, no, not the Nano. I'm still obsessed with that. But with the Alma BB in the new quilted fabric, in the black and white. I, I, I'm, I'm gonna get it here. I absolutely love it. I tried this on in London. I'm not even talking about this crossbody. I don't love this bag crossbody. I think it sits out a little bit too much at the bottom but I love this bag. It's £3,200. So it's not as if I've went and fallen in love with the canvas version of the Alma, which is at a slightly more reasonable price point. No, 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 no. I've went and fallen in love with the new 
black and white padded quilted type version that is £3,200. They say that it is crisscrossing pattern. It's reminiscent of the padded interior of the Louis Vuitton trunks. It's lambskin. I don't even, I don't even know why I'm reading all of these details to you because I, I don't really, I, I just love it. It's not even about all of the details. I have saw this bag. The black and white is so striking. I imagine this now as a top handle bag. I, I love it. £3,200 for an Alma BB, which I swore I didn't like, didn't like, never wanted, wouldn't have. And I love this one. Sticking with Louis Vuitton, and there's probably a lot of Louis Vuitton on this list because I am not shopping in Chanel as much anymore since the prices have continued to increase so much, so much, so much. We know they're very, very expensive. I did make a video saying that I won't buy another Chanel classic flap and that's right. They're just at nearly £9,000. I'm lucky enough to have two of them and I don't foresee me buying any more. I wouldn't rule out buying more seasonal bags from Chanel or more mini bags. I do have a bag on pre-order from Chanel from months and months and months ago. I ordered it off the runway. I think it's due to be here in November. So there is that bag and there will be limited editions or seasonals or minis that get me and I just love them and I buy more Chanel but it's definitely a lot slower and not as regular as I used to buy Chanel and that's why this list, there's no Chanel on this list I don't think. Well there is one that I will share with you that is pre-loved and I'm loving it, loving it, loving it <laughs> a lot but of the new bags I'm trying to probably shop less Chanel because it is so expensive and yeah that's where we're at with that but this Cousine PM bag in the colour called Storm it, you can when you see the colour you can see why it's called Storm it's a it's a tealy greeny bluey colour the chain the big chunky chain which I love is gold and silver the strap is one of the webbing straps now I didn't really think much of this bag until Deb, wild unfiltered, hi Deb, thanks Deb, <laughs> tried this on in London in the Navy, looked fabulous, looked wonderful, bought it, go watch her unboxing and now I keep thinking about this teal one and I think it's fab but it's £3,550. I, I know that all of these bags are not cheap. The Alma Nano is around about 400 and 1450 450 wouldn't that be nice? No, no, it's about 1450 and I fell in love with the orange of that which is still on my wish list. Why can't I keep the bags in that region? And then and the Fendi in the Fendi black and white region. These ones 3550 but I love this colour. I think it's beautiful. The leather is beautiful. How it sits on Deb, how it sits flat cross body is beautiful. I love the chain. I love the detailing. I know this bag keeps going up and it's got a lot more expensive but I really, really like it. Still with Louis Vuitton on the confessional list. I made a video and said I wouldn't buy this. I made a video and said this was too similar to the Petite Mal. The Petite Mal is the East West, which I prefer. This is the North South. It looks like it's softer version. Mm, interesting, I said, but not buying it. Then I went in store in London. Love it. Absolutely love it. And of course, I'm talking about the camera box bag. This is £2,460 and I absolutely love this bag. Not money were no object out of all of these bags. Every one of them. I like every one of these bags enough to have collected them and added them into this room. But we all know I'm trying to be a bit more considered and intentional and taking my time. But I love this and I know I'm eating my words and I know I said it was too like the Louvre Tom Teat Mal. I'm not buying that. <laughs> Why do I make videos and say these silly things? I love it. It's so cool. I tried it on in London and that was the game changer. I'm still looking at it here and still thinking, yeah. Then I tried it on. It's so cool. It's a it's a vibe. It's a piece. I absolutely love this. Last from Louis Vuitton and I've lost count of where we are and it's the new Speedy B in the Pharrell collection. Now I know that we all saw this on the runway and it's been out for a while and now I love it. I love it. I really like the red, the yellow and the green. But the Speedy B25 is £6,850. And I don't know in this if I'm just getting caught up in the hype because I really like the colour and I like the idea of the colour being leather. I think it's a real collector's piece. I do think it's really, really cool. 
but it's nearly £7,000. £6,850 is not to be laughed at. And I know I've spent stupid money before on bags. I hear it before you tell me. I hear you shouting at the screen. But it's a lot of money for a Speedy Bee, isn't it? It is, isn't it? Isn't it? Go on, tell me that it is. Tell me it's a lot of money for a Speedy Bee. £6,850. I'm probably between the red, the green and the yellow. I really like them. I just think it's cool. I had a Speedy B25 before and it didn't work and I didn't really wear it and I did wear it cross but too bulky and I sold it but I'm skipping past that. Somehow that will have resolved all of those issues and I absolutely love this. I think it's cool but it's so much money. Okay one from Dior and then I'll show you the one from Chanel I was talking about that's pre-loved. I wasn't going to include that because it's pre-loved but I'll share it with you because it's, it's a bag I've looked at a lot. I've went to visit on the site many times but I'll show you the Dior first. The Dior is the saddle bag in the Paris street map. This is another one that I tried on in London. And oh, London, what did you do to me? The thing with going to London is, firstly, it was fabulous with all of those fabulous people. And I was on a real high because it was just a complete and utter fabulous, fabulous time. So everything was better. Everything you were trying on, everything was just better. And I just loved it. So I then tried on this saddle bag, which I had looked at on the website because I spend my time stocking these things. And I had looked at it and didn't, I liked it, but I didn't think as much of it until I saw it in person. Had it in person, tried it on, strutted about the store, loved it. And it's the the Paris street map, which I'm trying to find. It comes in a beigey type undertone color and then it comes in a gray undertone color. And the one that I particularly fell in love with was the gray. And I thought with my leather jacket in the colder weather, there's it there. 3,150 pounds. So again, like not pocket change, a lot of money, but really, really liked it. And the reason I didn't buy that was because I now have three saddlebags. I do love them, but I've got three. And still sticking with this, being more intentional shopping and trying not to be just as, oh, me likey, bye, come home. Oh no, I've got no money left. <laughs> Been there, <laughs> done that. <laughs> but <laughs> trying to be a bit more reasoned and that's why it didn't come home from um, London with me. London was, oh, there was so much good stuff. I obviously shop in Brown Thomas quite a lot in Dublin and I love that store because it's a very friendly store and I know a lot of the people in there and I go into the stores and I have a very good time and a good relationship with them. It's fab. But the harsh reality is that they just don't get as much of the stock that they do in London. You're looking at the flagship stores on Bond Street and you're looking at Harrods and you're looking at Selfridges. There's just, they just don't get the same. And when I was over there, it's like, wee, my eyes are constantly roaming. It's like a child in a candy shop. There's so much to see that we don't get. And um, yeah, it, it's, it's testing and trying. <laughs> First world problems, I know, but it's testing and trying. I'm trying to find this bag for you. This is the Chanel. As soon as I show you it, I think you will know what I'm talking about. Find it. It is the Chanel pop art number five shearling maxi flat bag and this is from the Karl Lagerfeld's iconic fall 2014 supermarket runway show. It's so cool. It has a shearling flap and back and it has Chanel number five on the front and on the back it says 100% cc. It's very pop arty. It's very in your face. This is not discreet or quiet. Very in your face. The side panels of it and the underneath are then leather and it's quite a big bag. It's called a maxi flap. Now I have watched a few reviews on YouTube and I, I don't think it's massive but it's definitely big and that's one of the things that causes me concern because one of the reasons why I think I fell out of love very quickly with the denim pink decompressed bag was it was too big and I prefer smaller bags and I just crossbody even under the shoulder I didn't love the size of it as much and I would be worried this would be the same but it's very very cool and this is the one Chanel bag at the minute that keeps calling me back it's currently on Dear Lux's website who have also an Instagram it's for 7,795 US dollars if I look at that 
in sterling, it's £6,400. So that's not something you're buying on a whim. That's a lot of money. And I would need to be very careful because the larger bags generally I have trouble with and they don't work. I don't want to spend that sort of money on one and then it doesn't work. Although I think that pop art bag is quite popular. I think if it didn't work, you could probably sell it on with either only a little loss or no loss. Uh, it has been on that website for a little while, but we've talked about that before with the pre-love market slowing down. Those bags used to be bags that you, as soon as they came up, you didn't even get a chance to buy them because there was a waiting list for them and they were almost like pre-orders on the pre-loved websites. And I think that's another example of the pre-loved market slowing down. It is a fabulous bag, but it's a huge amount of money. And I don't want to make a mistake at that level. And the size of it is one of the things that gives me pause for concern. Those are the seven or eight. I think I started with seven and added in eight bags, nine bags, around that amount of bags that I am currently obsessing with and very, very interested in and all bags that I sat in this room and said to you, no, don't like it, not interested in it, not buying it, no, not something about it. Eating my words, love them all and trying to keep myself on my more <laughs> intentional and rationalised buying phase journey because it's easy to get caught up buy them in the hype in that they won't be available for a long or just because you love them it's very easy to get caught up in it but I'm, I'm working on that I'm evolving and trying to be better with my shopping let me know what you think of these bags do you love them do you hate them what's your favorite what's your least favorite are there any bags you're battling temptation for at the minute if you have enjoyed this in any way if it has been entertaining please do consider giving it a thumbs up if you haven't yet please do consider subscribing and if you're not done with me yet I'm going to leave another video for you on the screen to enjoy thank you so much for being here Thank you for watching me. Please take care and I will see you again in the next one.